सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली इन दिस एडिशन ऑफ ग्लोबल प्रिंट डिटली सो The G20 foreign ministers are in town. Uh, the Raisina dialogue, which is a, a partnership between a think tank and the Ministry of External Affairs, is having its big jamboree. So, why am I talking about this tiny Himalayan republic uh, nestled in the lap of the gods in the Himalayas, uh, India's northern neighbour? And the reason for that is, dear viewer, that India's neighbourhood is its most important. foreign policy story and never mind whatever happens in the rest of the world whether it's russia ukraine or the us of course these are all very big stories and big powers russia china and the us but no matter what india's neighborhood is its most important uh, foreign policy not just not just because it's foreign policy but because it's intimately connected with its domestic policy so today's global print is on nepal but before i continue I'd like to make an appeal to you, dear viewer. Please do subscribe to the print. Pay that rupees one fifty nine. It's a very small sum of money, but it will give you privileges uh, and benefits that non subscribers don't have. It gives you access, special access to several stories, uh, several videos uh, of the print at the print on its YouTube channel. So I do urge you to subscribe to it and pay just a little bit of money so that we can we at the print. we can continue to carry out the journalism that we do to practice the journalism that we do now back to my column global print uh, on the prince website it came out a couple of days ago which i hope you have had the chance to see and this like i said is about nepal now all of you may remember that in november the uh, november 9 2022 of course elections took place in nepal and uh, it had an unprecedented sort of a fallout because while sher bahadur duba of the nepali congress um did win the maximum number of seats in the lower house which is in the direct elections it won 57 seats um his his uh, pre poll ally prachand or pushpa uh, kamal dahal who is the leader of the maoist center he was a former maoist uh, he um he was in alliance with sher bahadur duba but he jumped ship and went over to the opposing side which is the UML of the United Marxist Leninist Leninist party led by KP Oli now mr oli um and mr duba have been in opposition to each other and may i add here mr oli is seen to be very often by uh, analysts in the region as the front paw of the chinese and uh, the nepali congress which has a very old association with india and if you know some decades ago it was the indian national congress at the time which supported the nepali congress this is at the time of the 60s and the 70s a uh, 60s actually when the monarch was ruling in uh, nepal and india's very strong tradition of democracy and it supported the democratic aspirations of the nepali people and therefore its leaders so the nepali congress traditionally seen as an ally not just to the congress party in india but also of india itself and as you know dear viewer of course the bjp has been running india for the last 9 years so but nevertheless the nepali congress seen as an ally of india and whoever runs india of course uh, that's what it is so the nepali congress and kpoli as uh, a uml party ranged on opposite sides of the political spectrum the maoist center leader prachand jump ship from one to the other from duba to oli and everybody said hey india has lost the plot and china has won again and if you go back to some of the articles i wrote from kathmandu at the time um a chinese minister was visiting kathmandu right in the middle of the elections just a few days before the the polls were held and everybody said what's going on because here is a big power sending its emissary to 
Kathmandu. What were they trying to do? Are they trying to influence the election? Nobody knows, of course. But the fact is, like I said, Oli seemed to be the cat's paw of the Chinese in Nepal. So did this mean that the Chinese had won this match, that they had been able to influence not just Oli, but also Prachand? But guess what happened a few days ago? Mr. Prachand uh, announced that he would be um, allying with Sher Bahadur Dhiba of the Nepali Congress again. Now, everybody did a double turn. So what happened again? And this is really within a couple of months of the elections taking place in Nepal. So what happened was the following. Uh, KP Oli, which had, uh, with KP Oli's party, which had several ministers in the coalition that he and Prachand led together, had uh, wanted to support, he had a presidential candidate in the Nepal elections, the vote is on the 9th. And um, Prachand suddenly announced that he was not going to vote for his coalition partner's presidential candidate, but that he was going to vote for the Nepali Congress's uh, presidential can candidate which is Ram Chandra Podil. Now, that was um, a quite a, a stunning announcement for KP Oli because he certainly didn't expect his own coalition partner to go and vote for somebody else, and especially in somebody in the opposing camp. That uh, uh, irritated Mr. Oli, and he uh, submitted the resignations of all the 16 or 17 ministers that were part of the government of the Oli Prachand coalition. And the uh, the fall guy or the fall woman in this particular case was Bimla Rai Podyal. She is the foreign minister or she was the foreign minister of Nepal until a few days ago. She was asked to submit her resignation hours before she caught the flight to Geneva to participate in a, a UN meeting. So here you had Bimla Rai Podyal uh, who was asked to go. You have the um, presidential candidate Ram Chandra Paudel, who, who is likely to become the new president, the next president of Nepal. And then you had Bharat Raj Paudel. Now, some would say uh, that this is the story of the Paudels. There's And as you know, in Nepal, the Paudels are the Brahmins or the Bahuns, as they are called, which is the upper caste, uh, people who are used to exercising power. Uh, foreign Secretary, that's India's Foreign Secretary, Vinay Quatra, was in Kathmandu a few days ago, uh, some weeks ago actually, and he met, it, met, met his counterpart Bharat Raj Pordia. And many people say that it is India who is behind these political machinations in Nepal. So Vinay Quatra met not just his counterpart, that's Bharat Raj Pordia, but he also met several leaders um, across the polit political spectrum, including Sher Bahadur Dhiba as well as Prachand. And like I said before, the accusation, the, uh, the unproven accusation against the Indian Foreign Secretary is that he is the one who helped turn the tables, who persuaded Prachand to abandon the ship that Oli was sailing on and come back to Dhiba. Now, if that is true, if these accusations and these rumors and this speculation, which is rife in Kathmandu, if that is correct, then certainly India has won this particular round because Sher Bahadur Dhiba has come back uh, to the limelight uh, and as I said before he seemed to be somebody who is very friendly with India. Prachan has also returned to the Dhiba camp and uh, there is ostensibly also a power sharing agreement between these people and not just between Dhiba and Prachand, but also uh, there is a third player in this game and his name is Madhav Nepal, a former prime minister, belongs to a faction of the UML, belongs to a, a, another communist faction like KP Oli. So this power sharing agreement that is likely to unfold is as follows. So for the first two years, Prachand will be prime minister, then, then you will have Madhav Nepal for one year and then you will have Sher Bahadur Dhiba who will bring up the year, uh, bring up the rear and the last two years will be run by Sher Bahadur Dhiba. So ostensibly, nobody knows, of course, for sure whether this is going to be true or not, but ostensibly, uh, India is totally on board this power sharing deal uh, between these three men. Many are saying, of course, that this arrangement is not going to last because why would Sher Bahadur Dhiba, who's, uh, who's gone this extra mile, why would he wait another three years to exercise power? 
Um, people are also saying that KP Oli, he's certainly not going to sit quiet and pretty, uh, waiting for his turn to come five years hence. And this is the nature of democracy in Nepal. While people are jumping ship from one side to the other, uh, a large part of the Nepali public very fed up with the tantrums of their political leaders. And we saw how in the last elections, the Rashtriya Swatantrata Party, the an Ahmadi type of party in Nepal, which did very well. In fact, Ravi Lamichane, its uh, star leader, he was also named the Home Minister, but he lost that particular uh, round because the Supreme Court uh, said that he was that that his citizenship, that his Nepali citizenship, was in question. So Mr. Lamichane had to leave the Home Ministry's post. Now, the question is that will all these political parties, are they going to just sit with their hands um, folded and not say very much? And so, therefore, is the story over? So just because India has won this particular round, are the Chinese in Beijing going to sit pretty or are they going to think of other ways to expand their sphere of influence in the Himalayan Republic? So that's it from me then in this political game of dice in Nepal, where there's never a dull day, but there's also never a dull moment as political parties shift allegiances, cross over without turning back and without a second thought. So do read my column Global Print on the Prince website, and I do look forward to hearing your comments on this video. Thank you so much for watching.